Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Larry Lurcy. Welcome back. We have got a very exciting video for you today. We are going to take a look at Photoshop's Depth Blur tool. This is a relatively new tool of Photoshop. They've had it for a little bit, but they've improved it a little bit lately. And so we want to take a look at it and see how it works for trying to blur the background a little bit to give your image a little more three-dimensional feel. We're also going to compare it to Luminar Neo and their way of blurring the background. But this will kind of give you two different options, decide which works best for you, and hopefully uh, give you a new tool you can use in your portrait production. But without any further ado, let's roll the intro. All right, so here is the image we're going to be working with today. We've got a model out here in this field. And as you can see, we've already thrown the background out of focus a little bit with our, our uh, telephoto lens and uh, the shallower depth of field from the aperture. But uh, we're going to see if we can throw it a little more out of focus and really make her pop out of the image um, more than she is already. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to try it two different ways. We're going to try it uh, using Photoshop's neural filter, the depth blur. We're also going to try it with Luminar Neo and their portrait bokeh uh, filter. So it should be interesting to see uh, how those both work and compare the final results. So stick around, we'll see how that goes. But let's make two copies because I want to be able to just compare them, you know, one on top of the other. We'll name the first one uh, Photoshop uh, Depth. And we'll call this one Neo. There we go. Let's turn off the Neo for now, although it's covered. Okay, so Photoshop, we're going to come up here to Filter neural filters and the neural filters aren't going to be there unless you've got um, a relatively new version of Photoshop if you're still using like a five-year-old photo Photoshop version uh, you may not have this but uh, you should have it on the newer photoshops so uh, the neural filters are a lot of them are experimental and they're in beta stages but there's a bunch in here and you have to download the ones you want you can see I'm on a new computer here so there's a bunch I haven't downloaded onto this computer yet but you're coming down here to Depth Blur. So you're going to come into that, and if you haven't downloaded it, again, if you see the cloud, you need to download it. But you can see I've got it here, so I'm just going to turn it on. Okay, so we can see over here, it's already gone to work, uh, blurred the background uh, even more. You want to make sure, a couple of little settings I want to draw to your attention, and it's mostly, it does the work for you. Uh, as long as you've got Focus Subject on here, uh, as long as you've got that clicked, it does a pretty accurate job of going in. I don't know if it's maybe using the object selection or something, but it somehow selects her and it's working the blur around her. You can turn that off and uh, play around with some of this focal range, but I found that it's much easier just to turn on focus subject and it locks right in. So then you're looking at down here is where you're going to kind of tweak this and get the exact results that you want. And let me show you some of the options. Um, the blur strength is pretty self-explanatory. We can take it down to what it looked like before, or you can take it all the way up to a ridiculous blur, But uh, which, although she does jump out of the background, but bring it back down. I seem to think that um, for this image, a little bit less than what it gave. Uh, I'm going to put it here about 35. I mean, it was already blurred, and so I don't know that we need... Um, that much more blur, but it's going to depend on your image. Um, I find that if it gets like this, that's too unrealistic that you don't normally have that look coming out of the camera. So I'm going to put it here. It's at 33. I think that's a pretty good depth. Uh, you've got this haze feature, which is kind of cool. Not for this image. It's a bright sunny day, but it kind of adds this fog. That's the extreme. Um, and it's not going to work very good for this image, but if you had maybe a rainy scene and you're trying to make it look like there was a bunch of mist and fog, the haze thing's a kind of cool one to play with. Uh, just not going to work for this image. Now, temperature is something that you might not think about, but will help with something like this because you're going to make your subject stand out not just with focus, but you can also use things like color. Um, you know, warm colors tend to move towards you and cool colors tend to recede. And so by making the background cooler, and we'll do this extreme as usual, um, she does pop out of the image a lot more because her warm skin tone is really standing out over the cool blue background and the colors look all crazy. So you wouldn't want to go that far. I found that coming in right around 9 or 10 
gives a, a little bit of blue. Let's do the before and after. And so that's a, a nice amount of blue, just a little bit. If you can see that it's blue, like down in here, I think that's unrealistic blue. So I like it to be right where you can't quite tell you've done anything, but can still kind of see the results. So I'm going to go, we'll do negative seven on this one. I'm not going to mess around with tint because I don't want to throw colors off too much. Saturation is going to affect everything. So you can take it down here. I wish that you could do it where the saturation was only on the background. That'd be kind of an interesting effect to do. I found that adding just a little bit to it, like maybe five, six, seven, will help amplify that effect you've gone for of the worn skin uh, projecting out over the cool background. You've got your brightness right there, which we won't mess around with on this one. But the grain is interesting because if you've got a really grainy image and you blur the background, suddenly the background's not going to have any blur, any grain in it, and it's going to look weird. And so this allows you to add some uh, grain back in. But again, we don't have grain really on her, so we don't need to add any grain. But that is really handy if you've got a grainy image you're working with. So those are all our settings. Let's hit OK. Oh, by the way, down here, you've got a whole bunch of different output. We're going to just do it to this, this current layer because we've already... Um, made a copy. But if you forgot to, you can just do new layer and uh, it'll create a new layer on top of your other one. So then you'll still have it on its own layer, which I think is super handy. You've got the mask, smart filter, new document. But we're just going to leave it on current layer. Hit OK. So let's look at the before and the after. It's definitely doing its job, throwing that out of focus. Let's zoom in up here a little bit and see how it did. Uh, with some selection areas like this. Uh, I think that's okay. We've got a little bit of a halo up here, and we've definitely had an error here where you can see hair, not hair. Um, in this instance, I think this is easy enough to fix. We would probably just put a mask on it and uh, get a brush here, just a soft brush at about 40% opacity, and we can just brush some of that hair back in here. This is a pretty easy one to fix. Same with up here. We could even switch to white and clean away a little of this outside the hair. But uh, that's not perfect up there, but I don't know that you will really notice it, especially from a distance like this. So uh, pretty good overall. It did a nice job around the top of the hair. So pretty good there. So let's close that now, or turn it off rather. And let's give Neo a try. So go up to Filter, Luminar Neo. Okay, so we're going to go up here to Edit, and then come down to Portrait Bokeh. And we can see our options here. Now this is just basically, for the overall effect, it's one slider, which is good or bad, depending on how you look, on, look at it. But um, let's just bring it, and I like to just go all the way across and see what it does with this, what the AI chooses. And this is 100%... Um, even that's not really an extreme. If you remember when we did Photoshop, it went to a crazy extent. This one's kind of put the brakes on, said enough's enough, um, even at 100. But let's bring it back a little bit. I'm going to bring it back to about 80. I think that's a, a, a good amount. Let's do the before and the after by clicking this little eye. Okay, I think that's a good amount. We do have the ability here to come in uh, with the brush. And let's try and... Um, Zoom in up here a little bit. Let's uh, go to maybe 100% and take a look up here. And it looks like it's already masking these areas, but if it was missing, we would have the ability to you know take focus and we could add some focus in there, but it's already doing it, it looks like. So um, I think we've got a pretty good uh, selection here. Let's drop back out a tiny bit so we can see the whole scene. And we do have these background options where we can go through and um, play with what we're doing to the background afterwards. Uh, lightness highlights. Again, we've got our warmth control, so let's try that same thing. Let's take it all the way, see what it's doing. Now, uh, it's much more up here. It doesn't seem to be doing it as much in the grass, but let's take it down similar. Looks like it's about, I don't know, about negative 25 here. Um, I'm not going to really mess with the depth. I think we're okay on the depth. Um, so I think we're pretty good with that. Let's try that. Try those settings. Hit, go ahead and hit apply. So let's look at the overall image and compare. 
So here is the basic image. Neo Photoshop. And you can see the uh, color effect is a little more pronounced in Photoshop. I played with that saturation a little bit more, but um, as far as the blurred background looks, I think they're pretty equal. Let's get in and take a look at this masking, like in that area that we know was a problem. Let's, uh, you know, Photoshop was there, Neo was there. Neo basically got a lot closer with its masking, so it didn't really require any extra work. Um, but Photoshop with a little bit of masking, we kind of got to the same place. So I don't know. Uh, for me, they're very similar. You know, there's Photoshop. There's Neo. So both of them are, are, are really nice. I, I do like the uh, overall look of the Photoshop, but we also did tweak it a little bit more than we did the Neo. But as far as just focusing on throwing that background out, I think they're very comparable. I don't know that one... Um, is better than the other. I would say uh, Photoshop's gonna let you um, tweak it a little bit more. Uh, Neo does a little bit better job right out of the box. At least with this image, that was how it was. So um, I'd be curious to see if you've had similar results and uh, which route you think works better. And uh, let me know in the comments. So there you go. There's two different ways of blurring the background and neither one's perfect, but I think both of them will give you a really good base image to work with. And with a little bit of tweaking, you can get a really nice look that will give your images a little more depth and impact. Hope that helps, and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.